Star Wars Destiny has a new breath of life as the post-Worlds buzz has a lot of folks excited for the game. The game's lead designer, Jeremy Zorn, stops in to talk about the state of the game, design philosophy, and teases some way of the force. It's exciting. This is episode 87, Designing Destiny with Jeremy Zorn. You have been well trained. No, you don't have friend. to carry a sword to be powerful. No. I won't fail you. Oh, do not. I'm not, not afraid. There is no threat. We're back for another episode of the Chance Cube Live here. <laughs> it's me and Kim. Breeze. Hey. Throwing it down. What's happening? Stuff. You know what I'm doing, though? What are you doing? Uh, I am prepping to meet uh, Mike Hill uh, at Kublicon. That's going to be a fun time. San Francisco. Me and Mike Hill and my wife, Sarah, are going to rain upon Kublicon uh, and go a whopping zero and two. And the uh, lack of qualifiers. Um, you never know. I mean, we're playing. We're playing. We're testing out some decks right now. Uh, I've I've thrown together Matt Kuzno's Wise Guys deck, which got him to day two at Worlds. Um, cool. Yeah, that's so a neat. Like, that's a neat deck. Yeah. Uh, single die Maz, single die Yoda, Elite Ayla, uh, which generates some money, gets a lot of upgrades out there, has a little bit of action cheating. Um, super fun. It's a lot of fun to play. Uh, uh, Sarah's uh, Sabine Ezra just like continue to stomp me, but it's Sabine Ezra. It's Sabine Ezra. So, that. You know that's that's unfortunately I, I know I shouldn't have it. Like I'll probably play it if I ever have to test against it. But it's a deck that I'm Sabine Ezra. Like I, I put one together early on and went, eh. and it was mostly because I didn't like how how it played against an opponent, which was the same issue I had with Pomas when that was a thing. It was like if if the deck's not fun to play, I, yes, you're out to win games. But when you play kind of casually, you also don't want to bring a deck that's just I don't know, like it, it just didn't give as play. much opportunity. Yeah, yeah, fun not to play because then no one wants to play with you. Well, so I mean, she's rolling in eight nine damage by turn two, and I'm just like yeah. yeah. I mean, I really like her as a character, but I haven't been that interested in playing a deck with her in it. Um, not to say that clearly. I mean, look at how well she did at Worlds and. And various regionals and things like that. So it's a good deck. It's just I like weird off the wall stuff. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, that's why I like Matt's deck. So I want to uh, test that out. Um, I may bring a third deck because I think there's two standard days and one trilogy day. Um, for mm. tri for trilogy, I'm uh, taking Tark and Afro, which I'm really loving. Um, I know I talked about that like super early on when Legacies came out, and then like it actually did well. Um, so revisiting revisiting those two and uh, uh, Sarah stripped down a Yoda Hondo. Uh, to trilogy only, so not as fast, not as uh, not as thrilling as the uh, the Yoda Hondo that was taking over worlds, but it's still menacing. I'm looking just very quickly. I'm looking because it sounds like I might have an extra big mouth this week because they're saying my mic's kind of loud. So I'm talking down a little already. bit softer. All right, I'm also talking. My mic's way up here, so it's not like all up in my I, stuff. Well, yeah, I think I had you really hot going I'll through the. Talk a little softer. Okay, I'll turn you down a little bit more. How about that? All right, cool. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but Usually anyways, yeah. So Yoda Hondo um, and Tarkin Afra. So we're gonna we're playing some more of those That's games fun. tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. It is. I want Afra to find. I want Afra to find a good partner. Like I, I feel like it's a, her, she's not quite there yet. Maybe next set. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, love to see some more I've droids been... out there to get better use of her ability. So we yeah. saw the rise of hero vehicle decks and we need to see the rise of villain droid decks probably yeah i'm sure that could be a thing very 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 soon for sure yeah i've been tinkering i want to build something fun um i can't decide what that's i don't know i'm not sure yet um uh, another matt kuzano i also saw that he was building a luke chewy um that could be fun chewy's chewy's got a fun ability that just hasn't really mm -hmm. hasn't i don't know hasn't found a good partner either but i did i played against a chewy it was a chewy yoda deck Yoda with anybody is just stupid. <laughs> well, and then they had they were able to throw cunning in there. Like, whoa, that I got man, like I got thwomped. Thwomped. <laughs> That's not a word. I got I got I got stomped by that deck. Like that thing just bowled me over. That I and it's not like Chewbacca's kind of way back there and a character that doesn't get a lot of attention, so Yeah. I don't know who I'm, I want to do something. I want to do something. I like I like to build weird stuff. Kind of want to pull out. I've seen a couple FN deck builds. 
uh, floating around again, so I may have to pull out an old friend. Yeah, I think. <laughs> well, you know how me and Palpatine how it handled for worlds. Um, yeah, I totally put him back in the deck box before I even started. So, <laughs> old friends, That's funny. Uh, I will revisit you in a casual environment. Thank you very much. Right. Yeah. Oh man. Well, very cool. Um, so we'll uh, we'll just move on into the news. Uh, the plethora of Destiny news that we have for everybody this week. Yeah, it's kind of quite. That's okay. Like, I think it'll get. I think it's gonna get more exciting in the next couple of weeks. I just got this feeling. Here we go. Let him take that back, huh? Neil, find out what you need. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so the Destiny World has actually been pretty quiet this week. There's been no news from out of FFG. Um, there's been uh, very little talk about what's coming or what's, what's next. Um, I know some folks over in uh, Europe are preparing for the Galactic Qualifier in Poland, which is uh, uh, coming up soon, May 19th and 20th. So, oh, is that? I believe that's the one uh, our friends from your Destiny podcast. Is that the one that, that they're? I believe helping? they're. I believe they're going to uh, make the pilgrimage down there. Um, cool. so that's really exciting. I, we don't get a lot of information about of these um, these GQs overseas because Cascade's not running them, um, and I, I'm not even really sure who runs each individual one from the different countries. It'd be kind of fun to find that out, and uh, maybe we'll do a little research this weekend as as the folks are out there. And but yeah, this weekend, so. It'll be interesting to see. Of course, they get the same assortment of prizes. We've seen it in the GQ in Spain, and uh, that mm -hmm. they get the same spot glasses and everything else that yeah, Cascade ends up providing. But it'll be nice to see. I think some folks are probably a little bit disenchanted with the current meta. They have saw Worlds, and now we're gonna we're still in the meta. Whereas last mm -hmm. year's Worlds, we like went straight into Spirit of Rebellion, right? Because um, so. that released during Worlds, right? Or like yeah. right after. Yeah, it was that weekend. That was the the first wave, and I think that's what a lot of folks were hoping this year we'd see Way of the Force. I'm sure FFG was actually trying to go that route until they had to change their release weekend for whatever oh, reason. Yeah. So, but uh, the week after, we've got two Galactic qualifiers here in the uh, continental United States. We got KubaCon in San Francisco and MomoCon in Atlanta, which is way closer to me. But uh, Mike Hill's out in San. You're Fran. going further. Yeah, I'm going further. Yeah. Well, we're gonna swing by ah. Disneyland on the way. So. Rub it in. Just rub it in. Just well, rub it in. You're, okay. We're going to say Disneyland to, on the way. <laughs> I went to exotic Minnesota, and y'all's going to Disney. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to remember that next year. You remember that. When we're handing out when we're handing out who gets to go where, I'm remembering that. <laughs> Wait, remember. Who's handing out what? You can come to KubaCon <laughs> all you want. <laughs> I could, but, but my job and my bank account and um, my husband all say no. So. Right. Well, so hopefully, we'll, maybe we'll see some new interesting builds. I'm I, what I'm hoping for from KubaCon is that people have seen the meta and there is a lot more experimentation. Now I know people are going to go and want to get that world seat for next year. Oh yeah, that's yeah, still on the go table. And try and play, but um, I I think it'll be interesting to see if there's more variety because I think so. People are tired of worlds. What, well, what I we think... saw at worlds, you know. I think, well, yeah, and I think people are, you're in a, you, you have an opportunity now to be really creative with a deck build uh -huh. and see what, I mean, you, you have an idea of what you're going to face because there's still going to be a plethora of um, Yoda, Hondo, there's still going to be Sabine Ezra, uh, you're you're still going to, and I bet you see Edwin's deck popping up at some of these, some, oh, yeah. there'll at least be a handful of those popping sure. up, of Anakin Kylo. So, um, but I don't know, I think now's a good chance to have some fun with the meta. And take something crazy that nobody's seen before, hasn't play tested against it, and then see how we see how well it fares. Yeah, I mean that's that that would be my approach to it. Yeah, I know the uh, the GQ. Price there are no guys. trophies back here, so I don't know that anybody <laughs> wants to take that advice. Yeah, I just think that's a cool that's opportunity right there. My uh, two player and my my porg. Those are my trophies that I got for myself. Oh, there's the fireworks. Must be Magic Kingdom fireworks. Sorry, fireworks in the background. Jason has a hard knock life, you guys. Hard knock people. life. Um, yeah, so so we'll see what comes out of those. Maybe some new spot glosses. Maybe some... Well, didn't they... Aren't there still two spot glosses yet to be released? Didn't... I I feel like once... Around the time that we had Steve on, and I know he was on a couple of the other podcasts, too, I, I saw it mentioned. Either he... I can't recall if he said it on our show or if I saw it somewhere else. That they, he had said there were three left. Like three they haven't released yet? Yeah. Now, so we got Hondo. Do you think Hondo is theirs? Do you think they'll have Hondo? Hondo was kind of a 
an exclusive at Worlds, I think, but I could be wrong. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but then I don't know if that counts. When he's talking about that, I don't know if he's talking just to Destiny, because we saw some other ones for X-Wing right. and um, a couple of other things. So, I don't know. We should talk about X-Wing on the show. We should. <laughs> I like X-Wing. Wait! I have... Look, I have a useless ship until... Until... Uh, 2.0 <coughs> comes up. So. Huh. Ta-da! There you go. There's there you your go. plug. There's your X-Wing news. All right. There's your Hyperloop um, news. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play a little flashy animation, and then we're going to give something away. Already? Holy cow. We're f- zooming right on through. All right. Let's do it. Look, I ain't in this for your revolution, man. I'm not in it for you, princess. I expect to be well paid. I'm in it for the money. And I kind of I kind of want to spend a little bit more time on the giveaway this week because we we do the question in in hopes that next week's show topic is going to be somewhat related. Um, and then Jeremy says, hey, let's do the interview this week. And we said, <laughs> yeah, <that's-> OK, <laughs> so. Um, but yeah. So what do we got for us this week, Kim? So uh, we're giving away a handy dandy chance cube exclusive power action token this week. Mm, we are coming. That's Coming cool. from Rex. Um, I'm waiting. I was going to say, I was waiting. You must not have one nearby. I don't have one. So, Sorry. Uh, we, uh-oh. Hang on. I got to pull up my thing. Because it was a long question, so I don't have it all. I don't remember all of it. Uh, so, originally this week, we were going to talk about Bo-Katan. Um, but then the, this really cool guy called us and wanted to chat. So, but the question was, Bo-Katan is bringing a unique ability with her to the next set. Um, that's allow you can play villain upgrades on her. Yellow villain upgrades. So, what... Yellow villain upgrades would you include in a deck with her? Everybody said Crime Lord, right? Everybody wants a hero Crime Lord. Everybody guy. liked Crime Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, this is... Oh, for the record, uh, somebody said... Somebody saw Rex and said that's a huge power action token. You guys aren't getting Rex. He's mine. He's my He's my pet. He's my pet. <laughs> Sorry. What's not happening? You gotta go to Disney World or Disneyland with Jason. To get yourself one of them. Well, you don't have to go with me. I'm not the keeper of the Rex popcorn buckets. Maybe we could we we could have a gathering. It'd be great. All right. So anyway, so our winning our winning friend is our pal Craig Matthews, who did say, uh, and this was a lot of people agreeing that Crime Lord Yoda is going to be the most fun. And I like this too. For this, I'll say prize possession. Let the heroes carbon free someone, and that would be really cool. I totally, totally, totally agree. <laughs> it's like alternate Star Wars universe. I love it. And then I want to find John, who I played at Nova, who prized possession my Vader die and mm-hmm. return the favor. But uh, so, Craig, make sure that you send us a message over on our Facebook page so we can get that power action token out to you. We got to meet Craig at Worlds. Oh, um, yeah. And if you look on our Facebook page, we streamed one of his games. So congratulations, Craig. Uh, so, for everyone else, it's another week and another question. So you can head over to our Facebook page. Um, and unless, you know, Jeremy calls us up and wants another interview next week. He likes um, us so much, he wants to talk some more. <laughs> next week, we're going to uh, do a little bit of talking about multiplayer. So we wanted to ask everyone, um, what card do you feel is the most beneficial in multiplayer events? So you can head over to our Facebook page. That question should be posted shortly. Um, you can respond. Uh, next week, we're giving away uh, to one random person who drawn out of the uh, Rex ATAT popcorn bucket um, a set of Chance Cube damage tokens, which look kind of like this. We got one fives and threes, so they're pretty cool. Those are pretty sharp. Sure. Yeah. Ooh, yep. I use those. So I don't have any threes and fives. Um, yeah. So so that's what we're doing. Um, Oh, wait, before you go, I want to, somebody asked the question, and I just wanted to revisit it, too. Um, somebody asked a great question about Bokatan. Hang on. Come on, Google Foo. All right. So, just to, to, because she was one that was spoiled a while ago, and I'll be honest, I forgot about her. Jason even was like, hey, let's talk about, I'm like, who? What? You, what? Um, so, Bokatan is a yellow hero, um, 12 health. 15 single, 20 elite. Mm. She has three range damage, a three range, a two melee, a shield, a resource, and her special. So her information says you can include yellow villain upgrades in your deck. Um, So the question was, was it, was it weapons or was it upgrades? So it's a yellow villain upgrades. Yep. And then if you, not as restrictive as uh, the original Finn was. Yes. 
Yeah, this is like what we what you would have wanted. You know what I mean? Like Finn, you could put any, but I think this actually has some staying power. Poor little Finn just couldn't get his motor running. But um, and we have the dark saber with those twenty point characters. So she's she's eligible for that. And, well, even her special benefits from it. So it's mm-hmm. deal two damage to a character, or three damage instead if this character has one or more villain upgrades. So um, that could be a that's a fun card to get to use a lot more um, cards out of the meta. So just to revisit that card, since we're not going into quite as much detail this week as we originally thought that we were. Mm-hmm. There you well, go. Thanks for the go. question. That was that- helpful. But, uh, yeah, so um, I'm going to play another flashy animation, and we're going to talk about what our discussion topic is for the week. But you know what I always say. Speak softly and drive a big tank. So you're all super lucky um, that we're already here. Uh, there's so little to talk about in the Destiny like news well, world right now um, that uh, it was really exciting for us to be able to sit down with Jeremy. Now, me and Kim sat down with Jeremy last night um, and pre-recorded an interview with him, um, and he did bring some goodies for us, which was actually a surprise to us. We didn't ask for him. He just said, here's some stuff. And we said, okay, I'm not going to turn around, turn around uh, stuff like that. So, um, so this interview is pre-recorded, and uh, as, as a note, um, we did have some video issues. So at some point, <laughs> at some point, if you're watching this live, um, Kim's face is going to freeze, and we're just, just going to stare, just going to stare at her face. Um, so me and Kim will hang out in the chat while this uh, interview plays. Uh, if you have any questions, um, feel free to drop them in the chat. We can try to answer them at the end. Jeremy is not here in person live right now, so we cannot ask him your questions live. I put him um, in the desk, sir. No. <laughs> he did like your Death Star, though. He did. Yeah. Everybody loves that thing. I love that thing. So, uh, without further ado, um, here is our interview with Jeremy Zorn. So here we are with the man himself, lead designer of Star Wars Destiny, Zer- Jeremy Zwern. Uh, now that Worlds is over, we can step back a little bit from the competitive scene and just uh, talk about this game. Because we love talking about this game. So we're... Uh, we do. We've invited Jeremy to the show to kind of Pull a little bit out of him about uh, what's going on and what's to come and design philosophies and all that stuff. So, uh, Jeremy, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Really enjoy this. Thanks, Marshall Jer- Jeremy. We're excited to have you on. <laughs> My pleasure. I told you, I'm calling you Marshall Jeremy forever now. So, that's going to stick. That's fine. That's, that's a good title. <laughs> yeah, it could be totally worse. I still have that as, as it grows, we can, like, we'll move you up in rank. I figure that seems fair. That does. I like it. Yep. <laughs> so uh, we put a few together some questions for Jeremy. So I'll I'll start us off here. Uh, which set best exemplifies how you picture Destiny for the long term? Because we've had some changes from set to set. Yes, we have. I would definitely say set four legacies. It's our first official base set, so we like to do you know something new and innovative in each base set or multiple things. So with Legacies, we had a new card type and plots. We also had a new die symbol and indirect damage. And we also introduced the power actions. So there's lots of things going on with Legacies. I mean, not every base set will have that much stuff going on, but I think it's the best time to do, you know, more innovative new mechanics that can support each supporter throughout the whole cycle. And I would also say Legacies is the first set that was fully designed and developed after the game had been released. Mm. So oh, was, cool. Yeah, very important to see what the real world could do with Destiny. Uh, lots of interesting things we saw after the game was released. Since we have far fewer resources on hand than uh, the world at large to uh, test the game and all those crazy combinations of cards and dice. So it was very enlightening to see the game released in the real world, and then be able to design a set around that, or after that. That also just helped with, with the overall balance, I feel, of the set. It seems to me to be the best set balanced as a whole so far, so... Oh, I yeah. Def- I- yeah, definitely to say Legacies would be out of the four sets, the one to base it at the future Destiny on the most. Cool. I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, I think... There was some great stuff in that set. Like you said, like a lot of exciting changes to the game came out in Legacies that I know really, really got the community all fired up again. Yeah, it was very great to hear. There was a lot of positive reception, so 
hopefully we can keep that up with the future sets as well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think it's, given what you've learned from the world at large and uh, everything that's going on with um, the changes that were kind of made to Legacies, is there anything that, from a mechanics or a combination standpoint that you'd be looking to phase out in the future? I don't know if you want to phase out anything entirely, but one thing that definitely comes to mind is just action cheating as a whole. Like I said, too, it was you know, pushed quite a bit, and maybe a lot of players would say too far, so it's mostly the like repeatable action cheating that can be problematic. You know, right in set one, at times you could get out of hand back before the replace upgrade limit was implemented. Now you have like Sabine Wren with you know, repeatable, bringing back weapons with ambush, getting those multiple actions in a row. So if there's one mechanic that I definitely want to tone down, would be action chaining. And I think that makes sense. Yeah, and I think you spoke about that at Nova last year, too, was to really get that that back and forth flow of the game back yeah, where, where you liked it. Yes, yeah, so it's very important to have that, that feel of game. It's a lot of players are kind of so long when they first learn the game is, you know, you take your action, I take action back and forth. And we want to be able to break that at times, you know, ambush the keyword is I think a very fair way of breaking that. It's just, mm -hmm. you can do that repeatedly, turn it to turn sometimes, around, round it to round. It can get very frustrating to play against and just be not what people really thought Destiny would be, you know, if you take that too far. So yeah, that's one thing we'll definitely be much more conscious of in the future. Yeah, because uh, some of us, they'll find those crazy combos <laughs> and figure out a way to loop them. Yes, so. they will. That's for sure. <laughs> so I've got, Jeremy, I've got some friends in old places that are going to get phased out of a set pretty soon. So I'm curious if there's any plans to reprint characters in older sets for maybe some of the newer sets in the future. Yeah, there's definitely plans to do all card types as reprints. We did summon the two-player starter box. Mm -hmm. We'll definitely continue that. And, yeah, characters will also get reprinted. It's hard to say how often they will. I mean, probably not too frequently, but... Yeah. I would say, you know, almost any card could get reprinted. There's some we'd probably want to stay away from, you know, stuff like four speed or whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as a whole, yeah, I mean... Cool. We'll, we'll see it, but, yeah, stuff will get reprinted. Yeah, for sure, and I think there's there's always a staple or two in an older set as the game progresses that we're looking for, or or it gets repurposed. We've seen some things in Legacies that uh, feels like it's a harken back to to some older cards and does similar things, but maybe in a different way. So mm -hmm. that's you. And it's always fun to see some of your old favorite cards come back to you. You know, play other games. <laughs> One of my favorite things is they have a long time favorite card suddenly come back. Oh, cool! It's always fun to see. Yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. Um, as the uh, as the game progresses, uh, we've noticed that uh, it used to be it felt like uh, a game of Destiny would take you know four to five rounds to finish, and now um, with with some of the larger power characters and some of the action cheating, it, it could take only two to three turns. Um, do you feel like this is an intentional design choice, or do you have plans to change it to a longer play experience going forward? Well, turn two is definitely not intentional. It's I think there's a lot of factors that led to that. Like, yeah, originally with Awakenings, it's just one set, so it's a very small card pool. The card pool now is over four times as big. The players will definitely find the best, most efficient cards and put them together to create much more, you know, quicker, fast-paced decks. And then, yeah, a lot of it does depend on matchups, too. If you get two Ego decks going against each other, that can be a very quick game. Two Control decks can you know, potentially be the opposite, be a much slower game, so... It's hard to say what exactly the right amount of turns should be. I would say, yeah, on average, it's maybe going a little too fast right now. Go where we want. So, like, I think turn four is probably a good target. Yeah. So, yeah, in the future, it's that's definitely a difficult thing to do is the carpool will always be, you know, at least four sets big, sometimes as big as six in a standard environment. Mm. So, it's definitely a, a difficult challenge to try to meet. So, make sure the Games played, you know, about that target window. So you also don't want games getting really slow either. That can also be very problematic. Or you get two or lots of very slow decks playing against you in tournaments. You're always going to time. That's 
not really what we want either for Destiny. So it's going to be, I don't know, a lot of trial and error trying to find out where the right window is and having an overall carpool meet that goal. So, yeah, I'll say right now it's maybe slightly too fast. So I'd like to slow it down a little bit. I think you hit. I think you you really hit the nail on the head though when you talk about if it's too, kind of too aggro decks. That's I think that's where we saw even at Worlds. That's when you saw it really finish up. Like you, you look over going, well, didn't they just start? And it, it was <laughs> we had a couple matches that ended rather quickly. But I think at that point it was a couple of aggro decks, so that makes a little more sense. And and I think you're right too that going to time if every one of your matches goes 35 minutes. You're going to be in a big situation like Worlds or even a Regionals or a Galactic Qualifier or anything like that, um, playing games over and over. If all of them are going to time, like you're going to get exhausted. That's very true. So I don't mean as long as I'm winning, it can it can go a little faster. <laughs> <laughs> can stay like three four rounds if I'm winning. Yeah, even fast games can be, you know, very fun intense like you can get some of those turns or some of those rounds that there's a lot of decision points you know some mm-hmm. very turns so you know if the game ends on turn three if it was a really long interactive intense turn that can be very fulfilling too mm-hmm. oh yeah that makes it that makes it half the fun now with if we talk about regionals so based on some of the results that we we saw come out of regionals um we're curious did you foresee the success of the mill arch type uh, we even saw it do fairly well starting out uh, at world some of those decks did okay um and do you have any plans for that mill arch type in the future yes I, I didn't expect it to like win a regional or two regionals but i knew it'd be you know a solid deck a competitive deck we had push mill more, especially hero mill set four, even though it was set three. It was bill and mill for a while. I had you know the throng card deck. <laughs> I remember your throng card deck. I've seen uh, that deck. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> nightmares. Um, so yeah, it was set four. We want to push you know hero mill see what they could kind of do. So yeah, it was not unexpected for them to be competitive, but to win a regional or multiple regional, I didn't really see that. So. I'm kind of glad. I think that's good to see. You know that there's a wide variety of decks out there that mill can be competitive. As for the future, it's it's hard to say. Mill is not one of my most favorite archetypes. Mm. Yay! <laughs> Collective boos from the audience. <laughs> I'm I'm cheering with you, Jeremy. I don't. Sorry, guys. I don't like mill either. Yeah, it can be pretty divisive. You know, a lot of players agree with you, but there are quite a few that also like it. So I want to. You know, give them tools to play those decks they also like. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of players, when they learn about Destiny, it's kind of sold as a, a fast-paced duel with lightsabers and blasters. So I want to make sure that's the heart of the game. Yeah. I prefer if damage decks were, you know, more more relevant than, you know, very slow control mail decks. I want to make sure they're still viable, but I'd rather not see mail decks become, like, the dominant strategy. Again, I can play into, you know, go into long, drawn-out games. I'd rather have, you know, fast, interactive games and just long slogs going back and yeah, forth. Yeah. So it's it's kind of a difficult balance to say in the future where the right amount is. I definitely want to be viable archetype, but don't want to push it too far. It becomes, like, the most prevalent deck in, you know, top eights. So it's... That's something we're definitely working on still, where the right balance is. Yeah. I like that, though, because it, it, it still gives something for every type of player. Because you're going to have your very aggro type players, and you're going to have your control players, and you're going to have your mill players. So I think that keeps them more engaged in the game if they see that they actually do have an arch type that can still be competitive. Like, if that's the way they like to play, well, if it can't do anything, well, maybe I'm not as likely to play. But since it's, it seems to be you know, really well balanced between the three types right now, um, I think that, that draws those types of players in. All right. Ideally, you want to keep this balance in the future, too. You know, have new cards and new strategies shaking us up, but hopefully mm-hmm. keep the general balance we have right now in the long run. Yeah, I'm sure that design choice of releasing a you know 160 or so odd new cards into the world every however many months is 
can can be daunting. Um, oh yes. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a very fun challenge. I'm sure. Um, so when you are designing cards, uh, does your team start with characters and then design mechanics, events, and upgrades around them, or do you start with a mechanic and build the characters around that? Uh, we do both. I think both are very important. I say as a whole, we probably start with more of the characters. That's like the foundation of every set. So like well in advance, we'll kind of think out what characters you want to include in a set. And a lot of times we'll use that as a jumping point, you know, what kind of cards you include to go with them. Any specific, you know, weapons or ships or whatnot that they're tied to, add those to the set. And end up anything mechanic like those characters could do. And, and look at it as a whole, too, as the set as a whole, to see where those characters fit and what kind of mechanics and themes you want to push with the set. But, yeah, I'd say a lot of cards, you know, get designed kind of top-down. You start with a the theme and try to match mechanics to go with that. But there's also quite a few to do the opposite. We design bottom up, and we definitely want this mechanic. So let's try to find a card that feels this thematically and match it to that. So I think both are very important, but I'd probably choose, you know, maybe top down overall, slightly more represented in Destiny, thanks to like the characters being so integral to every set. And. And I have to say, I really like how you guys will take that theme. So you'll have different characters from all different realms of the universe, but you'll always have a few that are together. So like you had a few rebels that were together, but at the same time, there's just enough of the universe that it's not just one full, you know, only this set has rebels characters in it, that there's enough variety um, from across the universe that every, every era of it seems represented in each set. Right. That's one of our main goals is to have every set feel like that. I also like to have some sets, you know, feel a little more, a little more specialized, you know, have a little more theme going. So, yeah, like I said, Empire War set three had a lot more Rebel stuff featured in there. Set two had, you know, a lot of Rogue One stuff. So, I think that's important too. Yeah, each set kind of feel a little unique, a little different from other sets, but it still as a whole represents every era of Star Wars. So, as we're talking about cards, I'm really curious to know what's your favorite card. Yeah, so it's really, really tough to choose. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I said the moments, I don't know, I just really enjoyed Thrawn. He's just, I nice. love the, the style of play he provides. You know, he really rewards skillful play and knowing your opponent's deck and just getting a look at their hand every round. It can, you know, kind of plot out how the, the round might play out and mm. what options they have. And I just find it's very interesting to play. Yeah. I could say, and you were. I, I allow you to to reserve the right to change your mind at a later date if I ever ask you that question again. <laughs> you can change your mind, but I love the artwork. On, I think the artwork on that throne card is one of, is some of the best one out. Some of the best art that you guys have on cards. It's it's perfect. Yeah, it's fantastic. So I have to ask. So if that's your favorite card, what's your least favorite card? Another tough question. Um, I guess. It's okay it's okay to say Jar Jar, Jeremy. It's okay. <laughs> Everybody loves him, right? He's the best. <laughs> sure, but my favorite. <laughs> uh, I guess currently right now, I probably should go with Sabine. Like, I understand a lot of players don't mm. appreciate playing against her, so she can be very frustrating to get the right draw and just roll really well, and she can just knock out a character, you know, potentially first turn. So that can be, you know, not the best way to play Destiny. So at the moment, I'd, I'd probably say her. Poor Sabine. I, I I just liked running interference a little bit more than her, but she's, <laughs> she's a little more tolerable now that that's not as prevalent. Fair. Um, so there are a plethora of lightsabers in this game. Of course, it is Star Wars. You can't have Star Wars without a couple of space swords. Um, Kylo, Obi, <laughs> Maul, Rey, Luke. Um, and uh, we're, we're just wondering, any chance that a, a Vader saber is in the near future? I would say that's probably a pretty good assumption. <laughs> Where's my he deflect? Wasn't... Where's my binder? Jeremy, deflect, deflect. man of mystery. <laughs> it wasn't the first two sets. His saber, for some reason, wasn't. And it's kind of a lot looking back in set two. There wasn't any like actual lightsabers in this set, so yeah, that would have been a good time to include it. But since it wasn't, you know, I think eventually, yeah, I want to get around to that. It's a pretty 
cool, important thing in Star Wars. So yep. we'll see. We have so many Vaders you could play it with too right now. <laughs> wink, wink, yeah. nudge, nudge. <laughs> So now I know you know that we're a bunch of Star Wars nerds around here too. So, uh, what's your favorite Star Wars story? I guess that would have to be the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise. I mean, you could use a force to manipulate midi chlorians to prevent people from dying. So, I think that's pretty darn cool. I wish I could do that. Right? That is pretty cool. That's not what I, like of all the ones like that's. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. That's a, that's a good pick, Jeremy. That's a good pick. I see. Let's see. Darth Plagueis, a villain character that brings back characters from being defeated. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, no, no. Now I'm just now day designing in my head. Daydreaming. <laughs> daydreaming. Fun. Oh, we love, we love to speculate about your game, Jeremy. We have a, a jolly good time making up crazy ideas for you. So if you ever run short, you know where to find them. <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, we, we've got the lead designer of Star Wars Destiny here on the podcast. And, uh, you know, it's always, it's always fun to try and pull out things from you that we haven't seen yet. Um but we got a little treat from you, I think, that uh, we can talk about if, if that's okay. Sure do. Absolutely. This is so good. So we're, um, we're excited to uh, have some exclusive spoilers from Way of the Force here that we're going to uh, talk through with Jeremy. Um, and I'll read them out, and Jeremy is just kind of curious on your, uh, your kind of background or design philosophy on these guys. But there is definitely a theme to all three of these cards that we're going to preview. Um, so, uh, first up, we're looking at Gungan Warrior, which is a six health hero character. Um, one melee, two indirect, one shield, one resource, two blank sides. Um, it's a six point character, so very reminiscent of those battle droids that the villains have. Um, and it's a Gungan, which is, which is interesting and will come into play here in a couple of cards. So, uh, so why Gungans, Jeremy? Why are we bringing Gungans into this game? And we already have one. the best, right? <laughs> Everybody loves them, especially Jar Jar. <laughs> I like all the other Gungans. Just not Jar Jar. That's fair. I'm trying to like him. I'm trying to turn a new leaf with him, but we think it's because like Jar Jar might be a spirit animal of mine and another. Like that could be the problem. Oh, that might do it. And it's but it's interesting. I mean, this character has no um, there's there's no text on the character aside from some flavor text which uh which is interesting we chose to uh talk about the gungans how they were technologically advanced which totally makes sense with those crazy shields and boombas and and crazy other things they did in the film so it's exciting to have a kind of a hero uh, compliment to the battle droids but um mm -hmm. so you could play a five white gungan deck if uh if anybody out there is interested in crazy yes, that's happening I'm doing it. Right, you are. I'm well, doing it. Well, Kim, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you for a second because you may not want to play five Gungans. You may want to do a three, and pair it up with our next card, uh, which is Boss Nass, the bombastic ruler of the Gungans, um, who is uh, two indirect, one focus, one disrupt, one resource, and two blanks, um, and whose uh, text reads: After you activate a Gungan, you may deal indirect damage to an opponent equal to the number of its character dice that just rolled a blank. And I, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first time that we are referencing um, character subtitles in event text. That's true. So this was something I think we've on the show been talking about for a while, how that's an interesting possibility that we come forward with with the bounty hunters or droids or, or, like or whatever. So this is really exciting that, uh, that you finally introduced this mechanic. And I think now the card pulls large enough. This is, um, this is pretty cool. That's one of the things I'm most excited about working on Destiny is to be able to push character subtypes. That's one thing I thought has been very fun, very thematic to use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a chance to dive into that and see what the players think? Yeah. And for uh, for 9 for normal and 12 for elite, uh, you could definitely uh, throw in Boss Nass with uh, three of those Gungan Warriors if you so choose. Um, and you could have this... yourself quite a quite a blank, blank rollout a thon. This Kim, this is hard. the deck for me. Like, <laughs> I cannot tell you how excited I am that my poor rolling ability could now possibly be rewarded. 
Like, this could do it. This could make me win stuff, Jeremy. I'm really excited. Yeah, you know, I'd never be as excited rolling blanks playing as boss and ass. I <laughs> know! And, and, I presu- and I presume uh, from a rule standpoint that it's, it's self-referential, right? So he can activate himself and he rolls blanks and does the indirect damage? Yep. Very cool. So he's also a, he's a Gungan and a leader. He's got uh, uh, two subtypes next to his character. I like that. Moniker, so we'll, we'll let Jeremy say, um, be oddly silent with that one. Um, <laughs> and <Yep>. then... Uh, <laughs> Last but not least, to go with these Gungans, we need to celebrate rolling blanks some more um, with the yellow event. Uh, one resource calls to play for the heroes. This is called Dumb Luck, which features a lovely Love artwork it. of uh, uh, Jar Jar. Um, spot a yellow character or a Gungan to reroll up to five of your dice and deal indirect damage to an opponent equal to the number of dice that just rolled a blank. I could roll all of those blank. I have the force powers to do it all five i think i could do it <laughs> the odds are ever be in your favor kim i know i love this ain't it's only one cost <laughs> but if you think it but it could not play in your uh in your boss no game. i'd have to put deck, that it's... that he shall who not be named in my <laughs> deck <laughs> well, then you can't boy that would be interesting deck. i know but man whew, so many possibilities though i really like it yeah and it's interesting, again, it's spotting a yellow character or a Gungan, so now we're spotting a title um, or, a sub, or a subtitle for a character, which is like great. Um, and a, a card that has kind of a dual benefits, because if you don't roll blanks, then you roll something better, and if you do roll blanks, then uh, you've done some indirect damage, which is, yeah, which is great. Yeah, that's a win-win. Right. You know, an indirect is so sneaky, Jeremy. Like, I wasn't sure how I felt about it at first, but in the last games that I've kind of played... And you, you, at first you start off like, well, I'm not making a lot of headway. And then all of a sudden, like, if you, you get a couple damage sides, if you've got a character that's doing that, and all of a sudden, everybody on your opponent's side is hurting. So it's really sneaky that you'll go from being okay to all of a sudden, uh-oh, now I have hard decisions to make. Mm-hmm. Because this character's getting awful close on health. But this one's not doing, like, so where am I going to put the damage? Like, man, it's sneaky. Right. That's one thing I love about indirect damage. It gives your opponents, you know more choices to make. Also, it can slow games down, too. Instead of doing all that direct damage and killing a character, you know, turn one or two, the indirect damage can prolong the mm-hmm. character deaths and make games last longer, and overall it should be more interesting. Mm. And it kind of gives you an idea of what your opponent's thinking. Like, so, like, who are they not putting indirect on? Like, so is that who they're they're trying to load up? Mm. Getting your getting your opponent's head a little bit. Yeah, good point. Very cool. Well, Jeremy, thank you so much for sharing uh, some Gungan cards with us and uh, for answering all of our questions. Um, is there anything you'd like to say to the fans before you head off tonight? I uh, just had a great time at Worlds. I met a lot of you there. And it was a real pleasure. and I look forward to meeting more of you in the future. I'll be at Gen Con this year, so nice. feel free to come say hi to me. Excellent. And thanks, thanks for all the positive feedback I've been hearing. It's, all, it's a pleasure to see that and read that, so... Thanks for playing Destiny, and we'll see how stuff I does. <laughs> We're excited. We are. And thanks for excited. all that you do too, Jeremy. We we appreciate all that you do for the community as well. And one of our question things just said uh, thanks for Grievous from everyone. The new Grievous <laughs> coming out in the new set. <laughs> yeah, that's good to hear. And thank you guys. We appreciate you guys do a lot for the community. So thank you. Means a lot to us too. Excellent. Well, Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you. You too. The Jedi! What do you know? (laughs) I'm telling you, he's the nicest guy, you guys, so if you don't be intimidated if you see him at an event, absolutely go up and chat with him. He's super fun to talk to. Absolutely. Oh, so much fun to have uh, Jeremy here on the show, and uh, we look forward to talking to him again in the future. Hope you enjoyed uh, those way of the four spoilers, and you're I looking love forward to some some Gungan decks out there. I mean, when you think about it, the heroes needed a, a counter to battle droids. Not like battle droids are super competitive, but you know, it's it's fun. It's very thematic, and, um, and so I- you could do a multiplayer event of battle droids, Jawas, Gungans. We just need one more. <laughs> Everybody has five wide. <laughs> five, five wide. wide uh, like, how much fun would that be, though? Right. 
Oh, man. Super fun. Well, um, we have come to the close of our show. It was a little a brief show for us, but, I mean, Jeremy, like, takes all the weight, so what else can we do? There's really very little else we can do to be really excited about, you know, Way of the Forests, but... Um, we always we talk hope you a little... guys like those spoilers, yeah. We always talk I... a little Star Wars at the end, so... Oh, I think so. Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm so, ex- I'm so excited that I can roll blanks and be successful. I'm really happy about this. <laughs> so, uh, so... So Star Wars, I mean, I know we're all looking forward to the release of Solo. It's coming out soon. The world uh, the premiere. premiere. Everybody was really excited. Our good friend Dan Z from Call of the Kenobi was there. And, oh, uh, he had such cool pictures. It wasn't fair. Not fair. He got he got to sit in the in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon with Chewie. So I asked him, like, please tell me that you said punch at Chewie while you were in there. And he said that he did. So... <laughs> um, uh, that that had to be amazing, and a lot of the feedback is kind of what I expected. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I saw a few people say that it was a little slow to start in the first act. Yeah. Um, we'll see. That's that's a that's a personal opinion, so we'll see. Yeah. Um, but overall, it sounds I I okay. didn't think it would be a bad movie. It just takes some time to adjust to these new folks in very established character roles, yep. but. I have no doubt that um, we some of us may have a new favorite Lando. Uh, well, that's pretty popular. That's that's happening. I think. Uh, what about not the Billy D. Williams isn't amazing, right? Well, what about you? So I've been cheating on Destiny. What? What? A little Money bit. Sense of the rest of the show. With a little bit, um, we picked up Legion. So I've been checking out. They've announced a few fun little expansions for Legions. Mm -hmm. Princess Leia is going to be an option. And we saw that figure at Worlds. If you were on one of our streams where we took everybody for a tour and the hall thought that we were all insane walking around with a camera on a stick. We um, we did (laughs) the case. That was really funny. If you got the looks, I wish they probably would not have been happy if we turned the camera. But, oh man, the looks that we got... (laughs) Walking around with that a little bit was kind of funny. Um, and and Jim, oh, uh, I think Jim told me that Boba Fett was also announced for Legion. So he's nice. kind of excited about that. It, this this is a game that certainly um, hits a lot of fun points for my husband who enjoys miniature painting quite a great deal. So I'm terrible at it, but I got a guy in my house that'll paint all my stuff for me. And I don't have to paint. I have to feed him occasionally. And but didn't I hear it. you? Didn't I hear you say that someone's figured out how to illuminate the lightsabers on the figures? Yes. Um, yes. And I told him um, that has to happen. But on YouTube, we did find a video where someone found a way to illuminate them. That's awesome. So, yeah, that needs to happen. Excellent. Because the what's cool, the store events with that actually has certificates and stuff that they give away for, like, the best painted squad and stuff like that. Oh, so it's kind of cool. Yeah. So other than that, like, I still have some reading to catch up on. So I want to read that. Did you start? Did you get the Han Lando book? I did. I haven't started. I was trying to trying to breeze through Canto Bite, but I think I'm going to have to just start reading the new Han book. Yeah, I'm. Uh, that's my next one that I really. But I need to finish Dark Disciple. Yeah. And honestly, I just have been so, just been so busy. I haven't been able to really sit down with it. And then when I do have time, my darn tablet's dead. Mm. It like never fails. I'm like, I'm gonna not read this because I'm at twelve percent. So that's where that Fair goes. Point. Excellent. Such well, is, such is grown up life. Thanks everyone for joining us this week. I hope you enjoyed the interview and the spoilers. Um, we'll be back next week to talk multiplayer. We're really excited. Um, we got some good multiplayer yeah, stories to share from Worlds, soon. and uh, and check us out on all the social channels, which you'll hear about in just a moment. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you, guys. Come back again. Hang out. We we love it. Bye. <laughs> This has been the Chance Cube, a Star Wars Destiny podcast, a nonprofit organization dedicated to building community through gaming. Visit our website for all things Star Wars Destiny, including our price watch, meta tracker, and latest articles from the Chance Cube family. Find our latest videos on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit us at patreon.com slash the chance cube. Your patronage allows us to grow this program and help us give back to the gaming community by sponsoring events, giveaways, and supporting our own community building initiatives. This is Mike Hill, the voice of the Chance Cube. Thanks for listening.
The Chance Cube is not affiliated with Fantasy Flight Games, Lucasfilms, or the Walt Disney Company.